Uh, with that, we move on to the fireside chat. I would like to invite on stage uh, my expert for today, Ms. Seema Jairajani. Seema is the brilliant mind behind the extraordinary book, Art of Indian Coiffures, unveiling the captivating hairstyles from ancient times to modern trends. She has been a member of the prestigious jury of the OMC Hair World Championship 2018 in Paris. She represented India in many championships and continues to do so. Seema has released a hair collection. Uh, she releases a hair collection annually at Salon India. With her LCGI degree in hairdressing, Seema was a visiting verifier and quality controller for City and Guilds UK for international vocational qualification exams conducted in India. She has won Georgie Court's International Online Championship in 2021, in which 68 countries had competed. Her makeup education comes from the prestigious academies and trainers, including London College of Fashion, AOFM, Cryolin, Yasmin Hines, and Nanara Berezina. Seema is also an exceptional educator with nearly 40 years of experience in makeup and hairstyling industry. Uh, Seema, can we please have you on stage? I would also request Vikas Vich, Managing Director, Professional Beauty India, to conduct this session. Please. Thanks, thanks for the introductions, Kanishka. You might need to do tran some translation as I talk. Um, actually, actually, while we're doing it, I mean, you can do it. Um, I'm very excited about this session. So, in the morning, we've been talking very much about running the business, the challenges of being a small business, medium-sized, big business. Um, we talked about process, technology, um, financing, all that stuff. But here we really get to do a new kind of session where we're having what we call a tete-a-tete, head-to-head, one-on-one conversation with, you know, for, for many of us, an industry icon. Um, and an icon that doesn't really refer to herself or project herself as an icon. Um, she's generally always in the background, uh, very humble. But Seema's, and we'll draw it out in this conversation, from a hairdresser point of view, she's done everything you can do in the career of a hairdresser. From being a hairdresser, training internationally, running her own salon, doing celebrity work with, you know, doing Bollywood work working for all the big editorials, running an academy, and then deciding to give up the salon. We might come to that as well, because some salon owners might think, how do you give it up? And why do you give it up? Um, to then focus on what was her, her true calling, her true passion, which is education. So here we're gonna really talk about the spirit of the hairdresser, which is great work, great quality, and how to give back and how to raise the next generation of great hairdressers. And um, right at the back of the hall by our hair stage, we put a new little initiative together. It's called the British Hairdressing Awards Gallery. Um, it's our London show, which is one of the most prestigious hairdressing awards in the world. And my vision has been since last year to how do we showcase Indian hairdressing talent? And we know talent is here. How do we get it to the level it can showcase itself internationally? So this year I set a challenge to the community. Who's gonna have the guts to enter? And I said, I will guarantee you, none of you will win. None of you will make the finals. You'll spend a lot of time, effort, money, no return, no money, no rewards. And Seema was the first one to put up her hand and say, I'll do it because I want to showcase, I want to be the one that can show the way for the Indian hairdressers, we can do it. While knowing there's a lot of reputational risk and ego to manage for our community that will do it. And it's a tough, tough challenge. Um, you can see... And as a contribution and acknowledgement, we've showcased the work 
no, by the hair stage. So you can see some of the incredible work she, she delivered. Um, we can probably, one of the things I love about Sima is her story. So she's from an accounting background, living in the UK, came back to India, had a lot of health issues, had to fight the stereotype and the stigma of good Indian career accounting to switch to something that 30 years ago was not, and even today is a struggle to be a hairdresser for reputation wise. So how, why the switch, why the kind of move to hairdressing and would you still do that move again? Um, so basically, while I was doing my BCom, when I was doing my BCom, I had a course of beauty. So at that time, Shanaz Hussain was the best in the 80s. And I qualified as a beautician to start with. But uh, I didn't think that was for me because basically I wanted to be into accountancy, which I was doing it along with it. Like, so it was majored in finance, wanted to do my CA. Uh, that didn't work out at that point of time, but I said, "Clerk, se shuru karna padega ya beautician se. Beautician acha sound kar raha hai, to I'll become a beautician to start with." So I did that. Of course, when I I was in London for a few years, I was back into accountancy. But when I came back to India, I realized that it's hairdressing that I love, and I got back into it. So it was something I was already doing it. So since we had college in the morning where I was doing the accounts and post-college after 2 p.m. I was doing hairdressing. So then I just had to, it was as and when as convenient and in UK accounts paid better. So afterwards the switch was what I like better. Yeah, so, so like Siva said, it's not an easy switch giving up. And we heard you know, like a Rahul and Vijanti talk in the morning, giving up big corporate careers to move to this industry. But, you know, what's been some of the payback that in terms of, okay, I've given up that safe accounting career. You'd have a good stable income to do something like being a hairdresser. Um, and like we're saying 30 years ago, when it wasn't even really a profession in India that was recognized. It started 40 years ago. For, sorry, 40 years ago. People used to call me Hajam. <laughs> Family bhi Hajam bolte the. So, it was something so interesting. Uh, you won't believe, but in the 80s also, I used to have plum colored hair and all this. I used to do it even then. Aubergine, plum, and things like that. I mean, people still experiment and they're like, oh, color kia hai. But I used to do it then also because I was quite open to, maybe I was a rebel, I don't know. <laughs> Looking back, I think it that way. But um, it was to do something new, something different every day because tabi hairdressing schools, we never had dummies. So in the hairdressing school, you took one person every day with you to learn a haircut, color, perm, straightening, something on that. Because my teacher was educated in uh, Vidal Sassoon and Morris International. So I had a beautiful exposure and that kind of uh, satisfaction that you have when you see your client happy. Because the client feels, wow, you know, this has made a difference to my confidence level. So that gives you a good amount of satisfaction. And you, you feel good, the client feels good. So you can never do that in accounts. You know, it's very satisfying. And the money comes. So what have been some of the best examples of, like you're saying, um, where, you've, where you get that instant recognition of the kind of impact you can have because I think it's one of those professions where you can change someone's life, literally change someone's life. So what kind of, and we forget that when we get into the business of it, we forget that actually you can change a person's life through your beauty work, your hairdressing work. So tell us some of the examples that kind of have really moved you, you know, when you've done your, when you've been doing work for clients. I'll give you an example of, um one of the brides to be, she said, I want to do a skin peel. I was into procedures as well. I mean, I, I stopped uh, salon business in 12, uh, 2013. So I had advised my client uh, with the kind of skin that you have, don't do skin peels. And 
she obviously went to somebody else and did it. And then she comes that I have my wedding in like seven days. Can you do something? It's the skin is burnt. And me being an aromatherapist with about 25 years experience before that. So I said, I'll make a blend for you. I'll blend something for you. And you apply this number of times in a day. And I guarantee you on the day of your wedding, your skin will be fine. But not the previous night also. It is on the wedding day, I assure you, your skin will be repaired. Because I know my essential oils and I know my blending, you know, the knowledge that I have and what I can give. And actually on the wedding day, her skin was flawless. So, you know, that made her feel so good because I mean, you're saving literally somebody's face, literally, you know. So it feels good that, okay, you did it. Your, your knowledge should be so fantastic that you should be confident that, yes, this is what I can do. This is the change I can do. This is the problem. Let's do it. Let's find a solution. It's not just about, sorry, I've not been a great business person. So I don't know how to make um, business plans or stuff like that but yes this is what I have to do this is the solution this is how to go about it and yes I could do it you know and that used to you get clients forever yeah, I think I think that's one of the again one of the points we forget is and what Vikas was saying on the last session that you're really there as a solution provider for your customers so it's not simply okay come in what haircut do you want let's do some makeup but it's understanding the challenges your customer has what problem do they have what do they want to do and you and again what's fundamental and like what Vikas was saying here what Savio was saying in the morning what Monty was saying you really need to know your stuff um, so you need to be proficient if you're doing beauty, you really understand beauty, the science of it. It's a highly technical subject. If you're doing makeup, you have to understand skin first before makeup. And if you're a hairdresser, you've got to understand the scalp. So being highly knowledgeable about your expertise allows you to be a better solution provider, allows you to build a reputation and service your customers better so they'll trust. I mean, on the side, when I, when I, my children were in India, there's almost one, only one hairdresser I'd ever speak to. So I remember one example, my boy Adi was about nine at the time. So he's like, I want to color my hair. And, I, and he was going to an international school. So rather than saying, shit, shit, shit. So I rang Seema, he wants to color his hair. I'm not going to let him do permanent color because he has to go to school. What do I do? So she's like, go to this store, use this brand, use this color. And, and then I, and it will wash off in one week, two weeks, three weeks. And it won't do any damage. I was like, fine. So I went to the store in Bandra and then I took him. I was like, you can do color, use this. But it's because of her integrity, knowledge, that for anything hair related, I call her first in the whole industry. I call her first. Um, because. So, and it's not, I mean, obviously we want to speak in Hindi. It's not a common thing we hear when we talk to the community. A lot of it is franchise scale, franchise scale. I want to go here. I want to go here. I want to do this. But you are the first one that's talking about knowledge. You need to know your stuff. Where does that come from? Because very few of us in this market talk education first, knowledge first. So where do you, where does that come from? And why is that important? Well, it's so important because um, the education I started, that was excellent. As I said, I wanted to be really well educated because I wanted to be a CA. And when I was put in a course for beauty therapy, I started like everybody else. I had to waxing and waxing. It boring. Laga. Or, and I said, Ye to mere liye nahi hai. So then I got into hair, I found it interesting. But that knowledge, enough nahi tha. So what I used to do in those times, it was very difficult to London to study in London. So two years I was doing savings and I was studying in a week and I was studying in a week. So 
you know, money, the way people use today, it wasn't there 30 years back. It wasn't there 25 years back. So, savings kar kar ke hafta hafta padhti thi. Because ghar se kar di thi kaam. Mera salon nahi tha. But, ek kuch achieve karna tha. And jo bhi karo best karna tha. Isi liye, mene LCGI degree tak liya hairdressing mein. Uh, even ABC hairdressing means cuts, colors, say, okay, teacher's training, Vidal Sassoon se kiya. Because I was basically purely a hairdresser. Of course, I've done skin, I'm an aromatherapist. Because her two, three years, we can subject le le to, you can obviously uh, be an expert. Ho sakte hai. And studies to continue. So, like, I'm going to go to London for the 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 London Hairdressing was successful. I wrote a book, I students, I won the World Championship in 2021. World Championship ki jury ho gayi. Abhi kya karo? Because I had a solution. Abhi Russia mein jita na? Abhi Britain mein jito. <laughs> Thank you. So, is saal mein European Cup mein finalist hui ho. Uh, my fingers crossed. I don't know win hongi ke liye. Lekin abhi jo fellowship of British hairdressing mein hai. Uski entry mein hai char din pehle dali hai. कि इंडिया से तो कोई कर ही नहीं रहा है बिकॉज़ ऑब्वियसली दो तीन चीजें हैं एक तो ईगो आ जाता है क्योंकि क्या कि इतने सीनियर हो के अब नहीं जीतेंगे गारंटी नहीं जीतेंगे शुरुआत से इट डजंट मैटर लाइक आई हैव स्टार्टेड आई हैव डन चैंपियनशिप्स इन पेरिस एंड एवरीथिंग विद नो मेंटर नथिंग एंड इट्स नॉट इजी एक एक चैंपियनशिप में 15 से 25 लाख तक होता है खर्चा आज आपका बिजनेस बंद कर दो और आप ये चैंपियनशिप्स करो इट्स नॉट अ इजी थिंग क्योंकि लोग मुझे कभी पागल भी बोलते हैं कि तू इनकम का नहीं सोच रही है तेरा एक्सपेंसेस और पढ़ाई भी क्या 5000 पाउंड है पढ़ाई 6 दिन का यू नो इट्स लाइक बहुत ही खर्चा है तो चलो ठीक है आई वर्क एट माय पेस आई डू इट बिकॉज़ आई फील आई एम एन आर्टिस्ट समथिंग समवन हु बिलीव्स इन वेरी स्ट्रांग एजुकेशन आज Solutions to everything. Okay, not the monetary part. Anything technical in hair and makeup. And this year, I saw that because thanks to you, I started doing championships again. It gave me motivation and it gave me direction because at this point of time, I was feeling, "Ab kya karu? Sab cheez achieve kar liya hai." I mean, if I retire today, I'm good. I'm sorted in other ways, but it doesn't give you a purpose. So even when I wrote a book, this was because 2014-15, uh, when hairstyling pe, people started focusing, not with Georgie Cott, he's become a different level of hairstylist. But people used to call me up and say, ma'am, we can afford it, you can do some books or videos, and share it with us. So this is the book jo maine likhi hai i understand ki youtube pe bahut sara milega but what i'm given is like a bible aapka jo foundations hai ye sara ek kitab mein hai aur first bride karoge to wasool ho jata hai so it's not something that is beyond the means ki koi 25 30000 nahi kharch sakta hai par 5000 tak kharch sakta hai and that knowledge is with you any time reference karna hai aap kitab khol ke dekh lo अब YouTube पे होते तो ढूंढना पड़ता है कि ये मुझे इसका सॉल्यूशन चाहिए या इसका रेफरेंस ये किताब में सारा रेडी है वो किताब लिखते-लिखते मैंने फोटोग्राफी सीखी प्रोफेशनल फोटोग्राफी वेंट अराउंड द कंट्री फोटोग्राफी की और फिर ये टेक्निकल बुक हिंदी और इंग्लिश में लिखी सो इट्स समथिंग माय पार्ट ऑफ गिविंग बैक टू द इंडस्ट्री इन सच अ वे दैट आई होप दैट इट कैन मेक अ डिफरेंस नॉट इन इंडिया आल्सो but abroad as well. And then I had um, somebody from Netflix, Hollywood got in touch with me. Because they said, we want to refer your book for our serials over there. So that was also really nice. Ki bhai, the book is reaching out to people. So this is a good thing. Thank you. If you reference karna hai kisi ko, to ye kitab will be the book for referencing if anybody has to do Indian hairstyle. क्योंकि ऐसी किताब और किसी ने नहीं लिखी है वर्ल्डवाइड तो 
that's my way of giving back and education because last 10 years I am purely into education from this year onwards I'm just uh, working 10 days a month <laughs> what well, um it's been 10 years since you've given up work running your own salon doing the high level celeb work why why did you give up running your salon which for most of us as business owners whether you're small medium big it's like you've got to keep working got to keep earning and you've built a brand you've built property so why did you give it up as you mentioned health issue you see when you have a passion for something a very strong passion for something it can burn you or burn others i got a burnout okay because i was teaching i was doing shoots i was doing clients i was writing for magazines and that passion led to burnout which affected my health so i decided no let me think of something which would give me satisfaction i love teaching because i had already done my teachers training lcg i also had done and from vidala i had done my teachers training so i knew that at some point of my life i would get into teaching to maine socha tha ki kabhi na kabhi to main sirf teaching karungi उस हिसाब से ही मैंने मेरा एजुकेशन इन हेयर ड्रेसिंग प्रिपेयर किया था करना तो है ही दिस इज अ गुड टाइम आई टुक अ ब्रेक गॉट माय सेल्फ इन ऑर्डर लाइक अ फिजियोथेरेपी वर रिक्वायर्ड एंड आई डिसाइडेड दैट दिस इज द पेस आई वांट टू वर्क एंड दिस इज व्हाट आई एम वेरी हैप्पी अबाउट माय डिसीजन बिकॉज देन आई कुड डिसाइड मेरा वो जो 10 टू 5 काम हो गया इंस्टेड ऑफ लॉन्ग आवर्स ऑफ वर्क I started having more family time. मेरे खुद के लिए और जब चाहिए मैं पढ़ाई कर सकती थी I didn't have to go to you see what happens is most salons and all brands give you the education. So they decide what knowledge उनको आपको देना है लेकिन मेरे मेरे हिसाब से that is not a complete knowledge. तो इसलिए मैंने हमेशा ऐसी ऐसी academies या approach किया या पढ़ाई किया जिसमें मुझे इन टोटैलिटी नॉलेज मिले यू नो आई एम नॉर्मली आई नेवर से अबाउट माई सेल्फ बट आई नो आई एम द हाइस्ट क्वालिफाइड नॉट जस्ट इन इंडिया बट अमॉन्ग्स द वर्ल्ड यू नो इवन टू रीच द फाइनलिस्ट लेवल इन यूरोप कप इज एन अचीवमेंट सो दिस इज ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ दैट कंटिन्यूस स्टडीज लाइक जब मैं नेक्स्ट वीक आई मीन वेडनेसडे जा रही हूँ सो आई एम गोट बी स्टडिंग विद सिलविस्टर फिनॉल्ड हु इज last 3 years world champion and i met him in may and i said silvista i want to study with you so he said yeah i was thinking i said no do a course i will come from india he actually designed a course and put it up and i'm going for my studies there i mean because i want to learn from the best from yokim rouge patrick cameron all these people who are amongst the, they've always at some point of time number 1 jo rahe hain वो लोग मेरे मेंटर्स रहे और चार चार पाँच पाँच साल इनके साथ पढ़ाई किए जब तक मैं सेटिस्फाई नहीं हुई अभी क्या हो रहा है कोई भी सात दिन का कोर्स करके इंटरनेशनल हेयर ड्रेसर बन जाते हैं सेलिब्रिटी हेयर ड्रेसर बन जाते हैं और मैं तो अभी भी पढ़ाई करती हूँ नहीं मुझे खुद को इंटरनेशनल सेलिब्रिटी हेयर ड्रेसर बोलती हूँ आई जस्ट फील लाइक आई डोंट हैव टू नेम माई सेल्फ एज अ सेलिब्रिटी हेयर ड्रेसर सेवन डेज इन दल सेलिब्रिटीज फैंटास्टिक So, you know, people need to understand there is so much more in the world. इतना है सीखने का एक बार ओ एम सी चैंपियनशिप जाके देख के आओ पैरिस में लगेगा कोई इंडियन हेयर ड्रेसर खड़ा नहीं रह सकता है उनके सामने देर ओनली वन बॉय अली इन बैंगलोर हु एवरी ईयर ही पार्टिसिपेट्स इन ओ एम सी एंड ही इज द बेस्ट इन द कंट्री इन कलर नो बडी मेक्स दर एफर्ट ये यू हैव टू स्पेंड मनी यू हैव टू स्पेंड टाइम यू हैव टू हैव एन एफर्ट Because you got to have that passion within you to make a difference. Yes, definitely the business point of view is there, but it's not that you don't make money. I mean, I'm following my passion. I'm doing my artistry, but that doesn't mean that I haven't made money. At point of time, yeah, I choose not to work more than this much. Like this year, I decided I'm just going to teach two weeks. The rest of the time, I can study, I can travel, I can do what I want. what what's the kind of last question before we wrap, wrap up what's the kind of balance 
you would advise hairdressers who are either they're professional hairdressers working in a salon, and that's tough to get time off to study, um, to the level of the hairdresser salon owner who's running his salon or her salon. What what do you think is in a the kind of balance to achieve? Like you dedicate X to training, X to your working in the salon, or, you know, as the owner or hairdresser. So since uh, I'm teaching only, I find a lot of feedback from my students. So what they say is salon se chutti nahi milegi, you know, kind of. But my like my education is modules, five five day modules. So agar kisi ko padai karni hai, paanch din Monday to Friday to chutti mil sakti hai na off season mein. So off season mein paanch din ki training kar lo. Maybe after six months, do the next module. So the education has been in such modules that the owners of the salons are willing to let people study that Monday to Friday or have a designed course. It means I customize it that we have three days and we have so staff we have to this level and this level. That is possible. You see, so there's different ways that they can learn. Also, sometimes the salon owners don't want to pay the fees. They say, bhai, itna karenge to they will leave our job. So in that way, the salon can pay part of the fees and so that the hairdresser feels commitment to themselves so they can pay 50-50. You see, so there are workable solutions because what happens is the hairdressers are jobi hairdressing profession mein hai na, they do because they have a passion for it. It's such a thing that, that artistic abilities need to be shown. They need to be expressed. They need to be grown. Is may aage barna hai. Or agar aapke staff ko aap pakad ke rakhenge aur aage nahi barne denge unke education mein to wo log chhod denge. The moment they have some monies, they will leave the job and go ahead. So, itna thoda freedom rehna chahiye ya thoda encouragement rehna chahiye ya kuch bhi to aap kisi bhi dhang se uh, right teachers do unke, unko education ke liye, you should give them a chance to grow. Get a commitment for them, from them that you have to, you know, for one year you can't leave or you only pay part of the fees or something like that. But let the hairdressers grow. It's very important. We're going we're to wrap up now, but some great tri tips. Some of this relates back to from the solar salon owner point of view, how to retain my talent, how to keep them growing, how to stop them getting poached. Always a big challenge, but I mean, core, to, core is what Seema mentioned is if you look after your staff, you help them grow, they can see this is the right place to be. They will want to continue to be with you because they know you care about them. They care about themselves. They'll care about your customer. So it's a great, it's why even though we think education costs money, waste money, waste time, I'm losing revenue. It's probably a great long-term solution as well for salon owners who can think like that and hairdressers who can think like that, keep learning. I mean, I will always say, I, I have not met anyone like Seema still who, like she said, achieved everything that she can and yet will still spend so much money, so much time traveling around the world to keep learning, 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 and to give back, you know, to our community in India. So it's phenomenal achievement. I must Thank tell you, you so one thing more. So I'm going to UK. The way I connected to Sylvester was I saw on his Instagram that he was visiting Mumbai for some work a few months back. I connected to through that. So I'm studying with him, but there was another ad of another champion hairdresser of who works in Paris and so he wanted somebody to assist him on stage, maybe to hold pins. I wrote to him and there's a big event in London. I have managed to get myself a place to assist him. So I'm willing to hold a cup of tea or a box of pin so that I can see what's going to be happening there. And that's the noise event, which if you see, you only have the world's top hairdressers following that. So I offered to help.
So I can hold a cup of tea for you. I can hold your pin box. Tell me what's to be done. But that's how you go ahead. Thank you, Seema. Thank you, everyone.